We're looking at Joseph Knobloch as he takes his first crack at the slalom course. There are a lot of obstacles on this course. Very nearly falling over on that one. There are three spotters around the competitors at all times during the course of this slalom event just to make sure they catch him if he almost falls over or if they need any help going through one of the obstacles that they're there to give him. So this is the men's masters four division. Now Knobloch trying to go over that mattress and he makes it over it with relative ease. The penalties to be aware of in this slalom course. If you knock over one of the ground cones, it adds a second to your final time. If you knock over any of the door cones up above the opening and closing door segment of the course, five seconds are added to your final time with the number of cones that you've knocked down. So if there are four cones on top of the door, you knock down all four, it adds 20 seconds to your final, tour, final time. And finally, the last penalty is the catch touch penalty. There, Like I mentioned, there are three spotters around the competitors at all times. If they have to catch a competitor, who's fallen to the ground, that adds five, t five seconds to their final time. Or if they have to physically touch the competitor or the wheelchair in order to push them through the course, that also adds five seconds. That's also based on official judgment too. If it turns out that maybe they caught them, even if that competitor was just about to catch themselves, they might not call it a penalty. So now Joseph Knobloch is onto probably one of the more difficult portions of the course, the rough terrain. Wooden blocks placed in all sorts of directions on that rectangle there. Lots of different angles, lots of different sizes. That's a tough course to get over. There are a lot of grooves in there that your tires can get stuck in, but Joseph Knobloch is just pounding through it right now. The arrows on the floor of the course direct the competitors whether or not they need to go backwards, forwards, if they need to do a complete circle before they continue. In this portion you have to pull this rope from one tub to the other. It's just heavy enough that you can't pick up one tub and then dump it into the other one. Again, all of the obstacles in this course are intended to mimic some everyday obstacles that these disabled athletes might face in their everyday lives. Wow, look at that. Joseph Knobloch tearing right through that rope obstacle. Our first competitor, Philip Kearney, it seemed like that rope just went on and on forever. Had a couple people in the audience laughing at just the absurdity of it all, how much rope there was in that bucket. As to get up one side of that ramp and down the other. And he does it. He's able to catch himself there. Three different spots here where these inclines take you up and over. You have to go down the abrupt other edge. And he just gets right through it. Here has to go all the way up to the top of those stairs. Doing a complete circle on the second step and the top step. The crowd here is great at the slalom event. They've been behind every single competitor during their runs. The other athletes are there cheering them on. The crowd is cheering them on. Again, we are in the men's masters division, which means these competitors are people who have done this before and done them exceptionally well. Now he goes back up to the top of that step. Does another complete circle, 360. Now he approaches one of the trickier parts of this whole course. The obstacle designed with opening and closing doors. On each one of those doors there are four cones placed on top, three or four cones. So these competitors have to open them very, very carefully. They would be 
docked five seconds for every cone that falls off the top of those doors. Another thing that adds to the difficulty of it is the fact that the doors open opposite ways. The first door opens to the inside, as does the second door. So you have to make sure that first, first door opens wide enough so that you can open that second one in order to get through it. Well, Knobloch makes it through perfectly. He's also got to shut both doors as well. That also creates a little bit of difficulty. They have to close. He's got the first one shut. And he's got the second one. Doesn't look like from here that he knocked down any cones. Actually, no, I see a yellow one down on the ground. That will be five seconds added to his final total. But really, in this competition, it's really more about finishing the competition rather than your final time. Based on the attitudes of all the fans, the organizers, and the athletes, it's all about support. It's all about cheering each other on, trying to help people get through obstacles, trying to help them break through that wall the determination and camaraderie that these athletes have been showing to one another and the fans and the organizers has been outstanding here at the slalom course well Joseph Knobloch is making incredible time through this course he's on to the final obstacle it's almost as if a ladder is lying flat on the ground it's that type of obstacle round cylindrical metal rungs one after the other so he's got to be very careful to see that his front wheels don't get locked in between them. And he gets through it great. Joseph Knobloch finishes off his obstacle course here at the slalom. What a time. Joseph Knobloch powers his way through it. Good job, Joe. Good job, man.